Hello everyone, today I'm making another video, yet another video about the Quasar VX format. Now I have made quite a few videos and I do plan to make a lot more regarding this format because I felt that there is not enough information about it. There's very little videos on YouTube regarding this format and the very few that you'll find the video quality on the machines is really bad now i have made quite a few now on this specific video i want to show you the regular maintenance the maintenance that you have to do on a regular basis regarding this format now i would uh it would have been wonderful if for example a brochure had been distributed along with this machine when it was sold letting you know how exactly how to do such a procedure but that never happened. That was never given to the consumers because these were usually sent out to somebody else so they can go ahead and work on them. But I mean, uh, I mean, I still use this format. Not only do I use it to play back videos, very old, very, I, I think they're very special videos. Now, I have been uploading those videos onto my video page and they have been receiving a whole lot of views. They receive more views than any other of my videos on my channel. And it's, it's wonderful. I knew there were very special recordings and I love knowing that people can go ahead and view them, especially the people that were around during the 70s. Now, I wasn't around during the 70s. I was born in 1982. But I think it's something very fun to kind of revisit, discover these very old formats, find out how they work, find out the competition that they used to have, how much they cost, and, and use them. I do record onto this format. This videotape that I'm holding right here does in fact have a recording, which I'm going to show you in a little while. But I'm also going to show you how I maintain these. It's, it's not that difficult. I mean, uh, compared to a VHS machine, which I mean, VHS are very common. They're very easy to maintain. Actually, VHS works a lot better than this. In many different aspects that would be the video quality the video quality this is quite low because this is a single head system uh, now for the maintenance it's a little bit more involved but not much I mean I do own other formats that the maintenance on them it's a lot more involved that would be for example the V core 2 as well as cartridge vision now I do plan to make a whole lot of videos regarding cartridge vision but not yet. I'm still waiting on that because I really want to do my best on that format. All right, so let me go ahead and zoom in right here. Like uh, like I told you before, my videos, they're not the best quality. I mean, uh, I don't get, I don't have sponsors. I don't, I don't use the best setups. For example, this is my cell phone that I'm using right now. I know a lot of people say that, oh, if you're, you have a lot of views on YouTube, you should not use your cell phone. You should use a professional video camera, but I still keep using my video, uh, my uh, cam uh, everyday phone. This is actually my everyday phone that I'm using right now. Okay, so that, that is this machine. Now, I have shown it quite a few times. Now, this is one of my three machines. I actually happen, I, I, I own three of these guys. Now, I've shown all three to you in previous videos. This is the first one that I purchased. It works very well. Now, believe it or not, this machine, I keep it open. I don't even close it because the maintenance, I mean, at least in my opinion, you need to maintain these machines, especially in the here and now. I'm gonna say every two hours. Now, there's a reason for that. There's that one of the reasons is because these videotapes they are quite old. I mean, obviously this format is no longer manufactured. You won't find brand new sealed videotapes regarding this format at your local stores. I mean, no way. So these are quite old. These are actually older than me. These were released way back in 1977, and I do. I do know that these, was, these were used all the way till 1983, believe it or not. So a lot of people, they really love these machines. They kept using them, even though there were a lot better formats, like for example, the beta format, VHS. They work a lot better than this, but a lot of people, they just kept using them. All right. Now, I would love to kind of explain, I mean, I might do that in the future. I might explain how to physically open the machine, like a sort of like a dismantling procedure. But I, I don't really want to focus on uh, regarding that on this video. I want to focus on the maintenance. Um, so I'm going to remove this cover right now. 
I actually already removed these screws before I made this video to kind of make this video a bit shorter. All right, and I'm also going to remove the top cover, which is this right here. It actually is very easy to remove that top cover because you don't even need any tools at all. I, I really think that the, the manufacturers that made these machines, now in the United States, the manufacturer that made this machine was in fact the Quasar company, the Quasar brand, which back in those days, it was part of Motorola. Actually, the Quasar brand was purchased later on by Panasonic. Panasonic indeed make, they made machines with the Quasar brand. Okay, so to remove this top cover, it's very easy because it's a total of two latches that are on the back. All you do is you press inward on those two latches and that removes this top cover. Let me go ahead and do that right now. Well, I'm going to turn off my monitor because it's kind of messing up the uh, image. I will turn on in a little while. All right, so I'm pressing those two clips that are right back behind this cover on the corners like so. So you don't, you don't need any tools at all. Let me kind of show you those two clips. All right, now that's those two clips right here. One right there, one right there. All you do is you press inward on those clips. They are in fact bendable because they are in fact plastic. Not much, it's a pretty rigid plastic. By pressing inwards on those two, you'll be able to remove this top cover. So that's all. So that's pretty much how I leave my machine. I use this machine quite a bit. I love coming home after a hard day's work and I watch videos on this machine. Not only vintage videos that were made way back in the 70s, way back in the 80s, but videos that I record myself. I do record onto this format and I think it's something very fun to do. All right, so let me go ahead and turn this on. Now this is the on button right here. So that's on. Now you won't see the green LED because the cover is off. All right, so this is a videotape that happens to have a recording. Now, I could go ahead and show you whatever it is I wished on this machine, but I recorded something that I believe is something very special, something that was made with a lot of loving care. Now, Chris, Chris is somebody that inspires me. I mean, I've been inspired by many people. I've been inspired by my father, my late father. My father's no longer around. He passed away when I was 15 years old, back in 1997. He used to do this, not, not, not as a hobby. He did this for a living. He would repair old videotape machines and he would resell them. Now I do this in the here and now as a hobby. Obviously there, there really is no reason to do such a thing because obviously nobody really uses videotape anymore. Everything's digital, everything's recorded on a cell phone, everything's um, broadcasted off of a stream for from a cloud, for example, whenever you watch Netflix. Amazon Prime Video, stuff like that. But I, I still think it's a, it's very fun to continue recording onto a magnetic-based videotape system. Okay, so this has a recording made by Chris. Chris, what he does, he makes animated, computer-animated cartoons based in the past. That would be, for example, the 70s, but he, he also goes further back in the 70s. Now on this video that's recorded on here, he goes way back before the 70s. I'm gonna let you see exactly how far back he went in time regarding his wonderful animations. Now I, I have placed a link for his channel on the description of this video. And do watch his videos, you'll love them. All right. So let me go ahead and eject this. Now the way you, that you eject this, you press this downward. Now whenever I eject this machine, it's it, it's really loud. I always try to hold it down because um, it's a very old system. It's a top loader. This is technically a top loading machine. All right, so you press this down. See, I kind of held it with my finger because it, it's really loud. I, do, I really don't like letting it just fly out like that. So let me go ahead and place this recording that I made. I actually made this recording last night. 
I went ahead and I asked Chris if I could please use, no, I'm not going to show you the entire presentation. I'm going to let you view the ending to this recording, if you wish, by, by watching it on Chris, his channel. All right, so you, you press this down, it's locked in place. Now you always have to do this regarding this format. You always have to move this slider towards the right, like so. What that did, it removed a plastic cover that's located underneath this videotape. All right, let me go ahead and turn on my monitor. I love that monitor. It's uh, obviously you can tell right away that it is not a widescreen monitor. Now, when I still buy, uh, for example, laser discs, I still buy VHS videotapes in there here and now. I still buy the CED format that's a disc based format that believe it or not is read with a stylus it's a very weird concept that was released back in 1980 and it was sold till around 1985 i mean the the last movies that they sold regarding that format are movies that were uh around 1985 so whenever i buy old movies on those formats i always try to buy them on the full screen format that's the square aspect not the widescreen because i mean at least to me i mean everybody's different at least to me that square look that square aspect it's a very nostalgic aspect especially since i was around during the 80s i was around during the 90s back in those days this was the norm this was normal to have a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. I mean, it's no longer normal. Nowadays, you have the widescreen formats. That's like, for example, the 16 to 9 aspect. And there are others. There are others more extreme than the 16 to 9 aspect. But I, I really love this particular aspect, the 4 to 3 ratio. Now, this is a 19 inch screen. It was not cheap. It cost me about $400. I love the fact that it's LED. It has analog inputs as, for example, RCA composite, which actually this machine, this format, it actually outputs in the RCA composite. So it's compatible. All right. So let me go ahead and press play. But like I told you, I'm not going to show you the entire presentation. I'm, gonna show, I'm only going to show a short part of it. And I'm going to go ahead and press stop and I'm going to go ahead and press regular maintenance. I mean, it might be that you have such a machine and you really want to know how to do such a procedure. Or maybe you're thinking of buying such a machine. I mean, you might have your own reasons why. Maybe you have um, family home recordings in this format or perhaps you collect vintage old vcrs and you're thinking about visiting this format which was released in 1977 at least in the united states obviously this format was released a little bit further back in 1975 in japan all right so let me go ahead and press play and i'm gonna let you let me go ahead and uh, turn off my ring light so it doesn't affect the image. All right, that is off. I'm gonna kind of focus on the screen right there. So you can kind of see this video. It's a wonderful animation based in the past. Even though it's something that's new, it's based in the past. Let me go ahead and press play. All right, now that is playing. Eighteen thirty four. Now that's way back. Lady Boswick, Lady Boswick, Harriet, what news do you have? Mr. Goodrich has sent you another letter. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Um, now, I've been using this machine along for for many, many times for quite a while. I've had this machine for about a year and a half already. 
um, it does require a lot of maintenance, like I told you, every two hours. As you noticed a while ago, you started seeing sort of like, like these white artifacts. That is in fact oxide. This format is in fact an oxide based format. Now that is not the recordable side, that is the rear, the backing. The recordable medium that's in here is in fact a brown color. Let me go ahead and turn on my ring light so you can see this very well. All right, hopefully you can see that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and poke this with this so you can... Uh... Okay, now the ribbon that's in there, it's kind of hard to see. It's it, right there. It's sort of like a brownish color because that is in fact an oxide-based formulation. Now, it is quite an awful formulation. Now, by the 1977, you had much better formulations regarding, for example, the beta format. Now, the beta format never actually used this formulation because it is quite an awful formulation. You get a lot of wear and tear. The oxide tends to shed, especially in the here now, especially considering that this videotape that I'm holding right now it's pretty much about 43 years old. It's a very old videotape, but I mean, I still use it. You can still record onto these guys. And like, like you just saw the video quality that was on my screen, it was not the best quality, but it's enjoyable. I mean, at least to me. All right, so that is off. Okay. Now, when you perform maintenance on this machine, I'm gonna really focus in right here because I have talked about this, but never actually shown it in a lot of detail. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move my camera to kind of really focus in on this. Because there are no videos about this on YouTube. And I think it's time. It's think, I think it's time that that's a very good video regarding this. That would be the maintenance for the Quasar VX format. All right, now this is in fact the video drum. Uh, it's a very interesting concept because you can in fact remove this video drum very easily without any tools. Now there were many other formats that it was not possible to remove the video drum as easy as this. That would be for example um, a V-Core 2, Beta, Umatic, VHS. None of those formats had this concept. The ability to remove the drum very easily. Now, on top of here, we have, in fact, that would be a nut. It's a thumb uh, nut. You can go ahead and remove this with your bare hands. But the thread on it, it's a reverse thread. If you have a, such a machine and you're trying to remove this part, don't spin it regularly. Spin it backwards. For example, since I want to remove this drum right now, I'm not gonna go ahead and spin this counterclockwise. I'm gonna spin it clockwise like the clock because it is in fact a reverse thread. Let me go ahead and do that right, th right now. So I'm kind of holding the drum itself while I'm spinning this clockwise, not counterclockwise, clockwise, like so. Now that is off. That is the little the little nut that holds it in place, save that, try not to drop it. Okay, now there is in fact a seal here. It's sort of like a rubber seal. You do need this. Try not to lose this as well. Place that aside. By removing that, you can now remove the video drum, like so. It's a very easy, uh, it's a wonderful concept. See, I just removed that video drum. Whenever I remove this video drum, I really try not to touch the, this area, this surface, because that is in fact the surface that the videotape touches. And take a look at this. This is in fact a single head system. Even though it looks like there's two heads here, there is only one. It's located right there. Let me kind of try to zoom in on this a little better. Right there. That right there is in fact the single video head on this system. By this time, 1977, you already had other formats that had 
two head systems. That would be, for example, Umatic, for example, Beta, for example, vCore 2. And those formats perform a lot better than this, to tell you the truth. They really do. All right. Uh, this doesn't look too bad because I do, in fact, maintain my machines every two hours. As you can tell, you, 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 you can kind of see this very faint lines on it because yes, this is, is, this is in fact used. It's a very old video drum. It's older than me. Uh, notice that there are no channels. I mean, if you're, you're very familiar with VCRs, you know what those channels are there for. Those channels will be located right here those channels what they do they capture that loose oxide and they kind of get stuck on those channels that kind of minimizes uh the chances that they'll get stuck on that video head it's one of the many advantages of having a channel video drum now regarding this format unfortunately they never place channels on it also Another advantage of having a channel video drum is that you'll reduce the friction. That's regarding the videotape. When you have those channels, it creates a very tiny, small cushion of air. And that really helps to minimize the wear and tear. But this doesn't have channels. That means that you have to clean this drum quite often. All right, I just removed that. Okay, let me go ahead and clean the video drum first. Okay, now believe it or not, I do have three of these machines regarding this format. As you can see right here, I have a total of three video drums for the Quasar VX format. Now that's the drum for this particular machine. This is the drum from the second machine that I purchased, and this is the third video drum which is part of the third machine that I purchased all right now okay let me show you this now um you can go ahead and use very expensive very difficult to find alcohol cleaning solution but you don't have to absolutely use that I use this all the time Notice right here, it says Walgreens. You can just go ahead to your any uh, pharmacy. I mean, even Safeway. Safeway. Safeway sells alcohol as well. It's something that's very easy to acquire. You don't have to absolutely use something like this. I mean, I love this brand, this product as well. Notice right here, it says 99.9% .9 pure. This is very high quality, but it is expensive. It's not like in, you can just go to your uh, neighborhood stores to buy this. It's a little bit more difficult to find. I have to order this online. I am not gonna use this today. I'm gonna use your regular old 91% alcohol. All right, so we're gonna place this on a little container. This is nothing special. It's just a plastic container. This is part of a it was a tea, um, a tea bottle. It came with a plastic container like this. You can use something like this. You don't have to use something. Uh... Well, technically I'm not a professional. I don't consider myself a professional. I, I will probably never be a professional because that's not my deal. I, um, I don't really get really that involved regarding my machines, but I can get them up and running. I mean, this. I've been amazed at what I've been able to get up and running. All right, so what I'm gonna use is this right here, cotton swabs. Now you'll find this in any store. It's a very easy to, to acquire. For example, you can go ahead and use, uh, that would be, the CR video drum. I don't have any in front of me. I would have to kind of look for them. There are these strips plastic strips and they have that material on the end of them it's an animal product for example if you're vegan and you don't like using animal products you probably don't want to use that product because it is in fact made from goat's belly 
it's that fur that they have on the belly there it's a very good product for cleaning video drones but i'm not gonna use that today i'm just gonna go ahead and use regular old q-tips for example if you're a professional and you're watching this video you might be cringing at the fact that i'm saying that i'm just gonna go ahead and use q-tips but i don't care i just want to let you the viewer know that this is something that it's it's not impossible anyone can do this all right so this is the video drum regarding the machine that i, I was just using a while ago it's not that dirty, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you how easy it is to do such a procedure. Now what I do, I, I kind of hold it from the bottom with one finger and from the top with the other. I really try to t avoid touching the surface because you'll leave your, your fingerprints on it and that, that oil will be deposited on both your videotape as well as your head, the single head that's on here. So what I, I just dip that on the alcohol. I just, just go ahead and gently rub this like so. Nothing out of this world. Now, depending on how dirty this, for example, if this is the first time that you buy such a machine, this video gel, more, more likely than not, is gonna be incredibly dirty. So you might have to do quite a few passes. Uh, but since this video drum, I do maintain it every two hours. Uh, it's a very short task to do. You don't have, I don't have to clean this uh, that um, thoroughly because I do it every two hours. But I just want to let you know that it's, it's, it's something very simple to do. And there's nothing out of this world. So I, I did one pass with the side that's wet and another pass with the side that's dry to kind of dry it off. All right, so I would go ahead and use another one, a brand new one, kind of dip it in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the, the head itself. Let me kind of zoom in right here. I had never really zoomed in on my videos and uh, I think it's a good idea to do so, really let you see in here especially if you're not familiar with this format. Now that's the single video head. What I do, I use the Q-tip, the regular old cotton Q-tip. I just wet it with alcohol and I go ahead and gently rub against it like so. Like that. And then I go ahead and get the dry side and do the same procedure to kind of dry it off. Like so, that's it. And that's pretty much done. I just finished cleaning this video drum. It's a very, uh, it's, it's, it didn't take that long. All right, let me zoom out. All right, now let me go ahead and place it back in the machine. It's very easy. It's basically the same procedure, but in reverse. All right. Now this part right here, it does in fact have a guide. Let me go ahead and spin this uh, right there. That helps. Actually, let me zoom in. I'm gonna take advantage because I had never actually zoomed in on my videos. Now that right there, that is in fact a guide. And that same guide is located on the video drum itself. See, that right there is not a 100%, it's not a complete circle. It sort of has like this cutout on it that is in fact the guide. So what I do, I try to kind of place it on top. Kind of respecting that guide right there and gently place it downwards like so. So it's back in place. Now, Technically, this video drum is in two pieces. There's two halves to it. That would be both the top half as well as the bottom half. Right there. So this is in fact the top half that I just cleaned. But there's another half, the half that's always on the machine itself. I'm going to go ahead and clean that bottom half right now. 
So I'm gonna get, uh, like I told you, I'm gonna use regular old Q-tips to kind of let you know that this is nothing impossible. Anyone can do this. So I just got it wet with alcohol. I'm gonna go ahead and gently rub. That would be the bottom half of this video drum. It's a very good idea, not just to clean the top half, but the bottom half as well. The videotape does in fact touch the bottom half of the video drum. You probably know this if you're very familiar with other videotape formats. So I just cleaned it with the wet side and right now I'm cleaning it with the dry side. Nothing, nothing special. It's basically the same procedure you would do on other formats, which are based on videotape. All right. Now let me go ahead and place back. That would be that nut that goes on top. Now, before you place that on there, go ahead and place that rubber seal on top like that. And go ahead and place that nut. Like I told you before, this is a reverse thread. So instead of spinning this clockwise, go ahead and spin it. I mean, it's been, instead of spinning it clockwise, go ahead and spin it counterclockwise. It's backwards, I know, it's weird. See, I'm spinning it backwards counterclockwise, but that is in fact going down in place. So that's it. I just finished cleaning the entire video drum along with its single head. But we're not done. There are other parts that I do recommend you go ahead and clean as well. That would be, for example, the guides, the steel guides. There are in fact steel guides here. Just like any other videotape system, you do have guides. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this one right here. Now this uh, Q-tip that I'm using right now, it is in fact wet. Uh, this guide as well. There's another one right here on the right side of the video drum. Get that one as well. And that's pretty much it for the guides. There are others, for example, that one right there, this bottom one, but they never touch the videotape. Those are just used as placeholders. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead uh, and use the dry side on those same parts that I just cleaned. Now these are in fact steel. They're very strong. You probably don't have to worry about getting these scratched. Okay, that's it. All right. Now this system does in fact use a cap stand. That would be this right here. That's a steel bar, that guy spins. Um, now, if you're familiar with example with audio cassettes, you'll know that the, the roller, I love the fact that this, this, was, this part is hinged. See, I'm gonna do that right now. You can go ahead and move this towards you and then you go upwards. That really helps because you can get really get in there. That's regarding the rubber roller. This is in fact a rubber roller. Now on audio cassette systems, the recordable media, the recordable side of that videotape always faces the roller. But on this format, it does not. This roller actually faces, that would be the rear backing side. So um, technically these rollers are there for a couple of reasons. For example, the, they guide the videotape, but they also clean it, believe it or not. Since these are in fact made of rubber, they tend to um, pick up those loose contaminants. That would be like the uh, loose oxide, as well as dust, dirt, stuff like that. I am gonna clean this in a little while, but I really wanna focus on the cap stand. That would be right there. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go ahead and get another Q-tip. I just got it wet. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean that cap stand right here, like so. I don't know why this video has not been made yet. I mean, this format was released way before I was born. I think it's time, like I told you. And I'm gonna make a whole lot more videos regarding this format. Now, it's not my favorite format to use in the hair now, but uh, I do enjoy it quite a bit. 
Now, uh, since this plastic part is here, I'm not able to get the entire cap stand, but there's a very easy way to get to that part. Let me show you how, what I do. I go ahead and turn on the machine. I move this towards the right. You always have to move this towards the right or else the machine does not do anything at all. And I go ahead and press play. Now, obviously it doesn't do anything because there is in fact a sensor right there. What I do is I place anything really. You can just go ahead and place your finger on it and that'll activate the machine. It's gonna start spinning. So you can go ahead and get to the part that I was not able to clean right now by making the machine spin like so. See, it's working away. Now when it works away, it spins the capstan. So now I'm able to get to those parts that I was not able to get to. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that once again. I'm cleaning it right now with a wet Q-tip. Uh, okay, let me, let me try to show you this. There is in fact uh, the tiniest amount of uh, residue not much, just just barely something on here. See, uh, and you can barely see it because like I told you, I do clean this machine quite often. It can be kind of annoying to do, but it, it, it's, it's required. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it once again with the dry side of my Q-tip. Like so, I'm gonna activate the machine once again, make it spin, so I can go ahead and clean the area that, that I did not clean. All right, that's it for the capstan. I just cleaned the capstan, the steel capstan. Now let me go ahead and clean the rubber roller. Now the rubber roller is this one right here. It's quite a big roller. Now on all of my three machines, the rollers are in great shape. They're not dried, they're not cracked, and they're not hardened. These do in fact become hardened when they're stored in, for example, attics. Attics, they get extremely hot. You get temperatures up there, uh, I'm gonna say around 115 degrees. I mean, it does happen. These rubber parts, they absolutely do not like that kind of temperatures. So I'm very lucky that the three machines that I have purchased were not stored in an attic or else these rubber parts would be damaged. Okay, now for the rollers. Since they are in fact a rubber product, I don't recommend you use alcohol on them because there is a chance that alcohol will dry them up and damage them. What I use is water, regular tap water. Let me go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead, I am in my kitchen right now. This is technically the, my favorite part in uh, my studio apartment. Okay, so I just got that wet from my kitchen sink, which is right behind me. Um, let me zoom in. All right, that really helps. Okay, so I'm gonna place my Q-tip right on top of that rubber roller I just press stop because I no longer need this machine to be activated for this because this can be spent very easily by simply using your fingers now I would try not to touch the sides because you're going to place that oil that's on your fingers on the rubber roller what I do is I place my finger on the top of the roller I place the wet cotton q-tip right over the roller and I go ahead and spin it like so, and while I spin it, I move my Q-tip downward slowly. That way I get the entire surface of this rubber roller, like so. I go ahead and spin that Q-tip towards the other side to kind of get a clean area, and I do that once again, but this time I go ahead and move my Q-tip upwards, like so. Now, like I told you, depending if this is the first time you, that you purchase such a machine, you might have to do this procedure quite a few times to get all of those contaminants off. Because whenever you buy such an old VCR like these, never expect them to be clean. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, but I'm gonna get, I don't know if you can see this. We do have like the, the tiniest amount of contaminants on this Q-tip. It's like barely anything. Cause like I told you, I do maintain this machine quite often. Uh, it's like barely anything. Cause like I told you, I do this. What, I, what you're looking at right now, I do every two hours of runtime. But I'm gonna do the same thing with the dry side to kind of dry that rubber roller. Like so, I spin it again and I do it once again, moving upwards. And that's it. We just cleaned that rubber roller. All right, we're almost done. Now, since you're in here, I would recommend you go ahead and clean. That would be the, both the audio head as well as the, the erase head. All right. Now these parts are a little bit tricky to get to. That's one of the many reasons why I leave this machine open like so. The way you're looking at this machine is the way that I leave it. I just go ahead and cover it with plastic and I leave it alone till I have to use it again. Because since you have to clean this machine so often, I would much rather leave it open the way it is instead of having to remove all of those screws whenever I have to maintain it. Now, when you clean both the audio and the erase heads, I recommend that you press eject because what that'll do, it'll move this upwards like so. Yeah, I know, very loud machine. All right, I really wanna get a good angle here. It's actually, that part is very difficult to get to, even in this, uh, even if you do this. Okay, I'm gonna start with the, the audio head, uh, which actually it has two functions. The audio head on this system, not only does it both record and play back the audio, it also is in charge of the tracking system. It's a dual function head. Now that's this guy right here. That's the audio head. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Yeah, that really helps. All right, now that is the audio. Notice where my hand is at. For example, if this cover was in fact down, I will not be able to get in there. But since I have that open, I can place my hand right here and really get in that audio head very well. Okay, so I'm cleaning it with the wet side of my Q-tip. Gently, like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it with the dry side. This is regarding the audio slash tracking head. It's a dual function head. And that's it. Uh, like I told you, depending on how, uh, if this is your first purchase, the first time that you clean such a machine, you might have to do that quite a few times. Now let me go ahead and clean, that would be the erase head. The erase head is right here. That guy right there is that black colored head compared to the very shiny chrome colored audio head. All right. This part actually erases before it is recorded with the video head. All right. Now I'm drying it with the dry side of my Q-tip. All right, now since I'm in here, there is another guide in here that I do recommend you clean. It's a very small one. It's actually located exactly right in front of both the audio and the erase heads. I do recommend you clean that one, like so. You'll only be able to get to it half of it from one side and then you go ahead and uh, kind of blocking right there like that all right so that's pretty much it we're done we just maintained we did regular maintenance now there's there are other maintenance procedures but they're not regular because you don't have to do them as often That would be regarding the um, the lubrication, the the movement parts. 
Now, I do recommend this product. I've used this product on many different machines, not just regarding video, but audio as well. Believe it or not, I actually used this product on my Cartridge Vision VCRs. The Cartridge Vision format is sort of like a, um, some people call it a failed format. Some call it, some people call it a, uh, a disgrace of a format, but that's up to each person. I do plan to make videos regarding the Cartridge Vision format, and I'm gonna show you how I use this product in a lot of detail. But like when you lubricate moving parts, that's really not part of regular maintenance because you don't have to do that as often. For example, I haven't actually timed it, but regarding the runtime on this particular machine, uh, I'm gonna say that I, I, I've placed, I'm gonna say it's about 70 hours, believe it or not. I've placed about 70 hours on this guy so far because I do, digit not only do I digitize, digitize old videos regarding this format, I also record onto them. So I do use this machine quite a bit. So let me go ahead and close this up like so. And let me go ahead and play back the remainder of that recording that I made. Like I told you, I will place a link to the video channel if you want to see more of those wonderful recordings based in the past. All right, let me go ahead and turn off my ring light. Let me go ahead and eject this machine. Place back that exact same videotape in here. Close that downward. Let me show you this in more detail. Like I told you, I do plan to make a lot more videos regarding this format. Press that down. You always have to move this towards the right. You turn this on with the green button. Now this third button is the play. You can't see it. You can't see that it says play because the cover is off. I leave this machine the way you're looking at it because like I told you, it requires a lot of maintenance. It's sort of one of the downsides of using such a format, especially in the here and now, especially since that video tape is so old. But it, it works great considering its age. I mean, at least in my opinion. All right, let me turn on my monitor. And I'm gonna show a little bit more of that video that's on here. Not the whole thing. I want to give you the opportunity to watch the ending of this video, if you wish. All right, let me go ahead and press play. I'm gonna press stop now. Uh, if you want to view the ending of that wonderful animation, go ahead and view Chris's channel. I'm gonna place a link on my video description regarding that. Like you just saw, the video quality that this format is able to record is not the best. It is quite low, but I mean, at least to me, it's enjoyable. Especially considering the fact that that was in fact a cartoon that I recorded. Cartoons, they don't really require that much resolution. Now you can see recordings, re uh, actual recordings that were made back in the 70s on my channel. I do plan to upload, I'm gonna say hundreds, cause I, I own a lot of videotapes regarding this format. Not just this format, but others as well. Now I do plan to show you Cartridge Vision recordings. 
not just films, but also home recordings, also televised recordings with wonderful commercials from way back in 1972, 1973, 1974. It's something very fun for me. And I think it's time. I think it's time that somebody makes a Cartier Vision playlist on their video channel. It, for example, if you, the viewer, you have a Cartier Vision machine and you're thinking about sharing those wonderful recordings made on the Cartier Vision format, please do. I think it's time. So I think that's it for this video and see you next time.